Uh, e damos uh, agora início a uh, uh, mais um painel. Uh, desta vez uh, o tema é Networking for Positive Change. A sessão vai ser feita em inglês. Uh, e vou passar então a palavra uh, ao moderador do painel, uh, Miguel Carneiro, uh, presidente da Junta de Freguesia de Vila Boa do Bispo. Miguel, obrigado. Muito obrigado, muito boa tarde a todos. Uh, agradecer desde já uh, a amabilidade do convite e o desafio que nos, que nos lançaram. Uh, a Junta Freguesia é, obviamente, sempre um gosto muito grande partilhar um bocadinho do trabalho que vai fazendo um pouco pelo seu próprio território, mas também procuramos fazer também pelo próprio país. Trabalhamos todos por um desígnio de desenvolvimento local. Uh, mas, obviamente, que para nós é muito interessante, acima de tudo, fazer parte de um evento que procura, procura mobilizar a sociedade e as comunidades, cada uma, para aquilo que é um desígnio comum ligado ao desenvolvimento sustentável. Eu queria só fazer uma pequena legenda relativamente pronto, ao painel, que será em inglês, eu peço desculpa por esse, por esse detalhe, mas ainda não conseguimos que os franceses, os nossos parceiros franceses dominem muito bem o português. E fazer aqui uma breve legenda, no sentido em que vamos falar de redes e de partilha para mudança positiva. Eu estou aqui sozinho, mas estou aqui sozinho porque temos parceiros de outros países que têm vindo a trabalhar connosco e que também partilham connosco hoje um bocadinho da tarde deles para, para partilhar um bocadinho das experiências que têm vindo uh, também eles próprios a desenvolver nos seus territórios. Um, antes também de passar para a versão inglesa, dizer que a Junta Freguesia vai dar, ou vamos aqui tentar estruturar um bocadinho, a abordagem em torno das redes em que nós participamos e porquê é que participamos nessas próprias redes, uh, o que é que nós procuramos uh, tirar e o que é que, em que é que podemos uh, contribuir nessas redes, e, e vamos dar aqui quatro exemplos muito concretos, sendo que depois vamos passar a palavra ao Mathieu e ao Filipe, que estão connosco online, para, para depois também partilhar um bocadinho daquilo que é a experiência deles dentro das redes que eles próprios também coordenam. So, from this moment on, uh, bonjour, salut Mathieu, salut Filipe. Thank you, thank you for being here, for, uh, for being here with us. I'm sorry, just to, uh, just did a, a quick... Uh, introduction in Portuguese for our fellow uh, colleagues here in the room. Um, we're in downtown uh, Valongo, which is uh, a municipality in the um, Porto metropolitan area in the north region of Portugal that just uh, won the prize of the Green Leaf Award uh, by the European Commission uh, for the year uh, 2020. 22, uh, concerning the previous year's work. Uh, but uh, we're here to share some good experiences and some good ideas. And I will try to be very concrete and very um, time-framed, so we can have the most time for you guys to, to, to share ideas and projects as well. Uh, we're, uh, all in all, and overall, looking at the big picture, Uh, Vila Boa Bispo and uh, many networks in which the municipality is, uh, is working in, is working in uh, are most of them concerned and uh, focused in rural territory. So uh, the previous panel, uh, just a, a quick shout out for the previous panel because it was uh, quite interesting with very concrete cases and projects that are very interesting Uh, for the communities that they serve, but we're uh, focusing in the rural areas where there seems to be some concernings, concerns that are the same, but all in all we have concerns that are quite different in terms of demographics, uh, social inclusion, uh, economic and local development, and all in all we try to find solutions at our doorstep, but we try to go out to the world, into the European continent, to look for other possible connections to help us, to help, that might help us with our own problems. And that's uh, the reason, and that those have been the main guiding concerns in the action of the municipality. The Vila Boa Bispo municipality has, has been trying since uh, 2018 to develop a, a, a long-term approach to its own problems. Uh, every, every community has them. Uh, and for that, one of the main concerns has been to develop um, structures, either physical or immaterial, that could provide solutions and ideas and contexts uh, for the population to find uh, 
uh, answers to their own questions and problems. And with this, uh, with this mindset, we, we started looking for different uh, areas of expertise and approaches, and we're, we're currently working in four major um, networks that I would like to, to, to underline in this panel and for this topic, of course. Um, and one of them, of course, is Rurener. Uh, the first example that I would like to, to underline and share with you would be the, in Portuguese, it's Rede de Autarquias Participativas, or uh, Network of Participatory uh, Municipalities, which actually it's uh, led and its president, it's the president of the mayor of the Valongo Municipality. So uh, in several areas of this field, the Valongo Municipality is uh, doing uh, outstanding and remarkable work. And uh, for their work and their expertise in, within this network, we decided to join to look for specific solutions in a very concrete area, youth, and uh, participation at a local level. Uh, this started, this concern started, uh, and this, this search started at a point where we felt like we were working always towards the same demographic, towards the same people, towards the same families. And we we're, we're started to think about creation, the creation of different forums and um, participatory moments that would allow different demographics within the population to be part of the decision process. For us, uh, that would be a key and a very uh, relevant uh, indicator that we're being able to address problems in different uh, demographics and in different levels. And this is the, the, the main reason why we joined the, the Portuguese network of uh, participatory uh, municipalities because uh, this network provides great and very specific uh, suggestions and technical support within the, ar the area of participatory budgets, um, uh, uh, models and, and um, answers and forums to create uh, consultant, uh, consultants, uh, consulting groups, focus groups, uh, different kinds of uh, inquiries that we can address the population and ask for their uh, participation. Kind of the example where they were mentioning this, this urban park that started from the initiative of some of the population. So we try to, with this network, we try to uh, get access to information that would allow us to make this structure uh, that brings this concern to a long-term long approach. This means, concretely, in Villa Bode Bispo, that we created the uh, local sustainability council and the, the, the local youth council uh, that are uh, represented in its minority uh, by the municipality and uh, the General Assembly's members, but the majority is represented through the, or the community's institutions, organizations, volunteering groups, young people, older people, but uh, it's key for us that the, the minority of the group is the municipality. So we're basically uh, more of a listening par part of that uh, forum than uh, other members of the forum. Uh, another example that's been uh, a hard work source of uh, attitude for us, it's been the Smart Village Network. The Smart Village Network is a network that uh, conveys villages, mostly uh, located in the rural areas, and it has, it's, it's a network that has members all throughout Europe. Nowadays, the main project that the network has been developing, it's the Smart Rural 21 that's now been uh, developed, uh, developed its 2.0 version, it's Smart Rural um, 27. But basically, this uh, network is doing pilot testing of uh, concepts that could be uh, implemented in uh, rural areas throughout Europe. And for that, it's, it's applying to, to European Commission standards and funding programs to test ideas and concepts to help small communities engage with their, with their uh, members and help small communities uh, target new audiences in order to, to fight uh, the depopulation process and uh, the, the, the try to kind of empower the, the, the community and its institutions uh, to develop their own initiatives that could get uh, a higher impact. So this, this uh, network um, has been very in the sense that we've been having access 
to several examples and several uh, exchange opportunities that's been uh, creating the basis for us to, to implement our own solutions. And in concrete, again, trying to bring it to Villa Bodbishpu reality, we're doing uh, 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 um, an enlargement of our children's park with several contributions that were um, that we, we studied and we visited in, vi in different countries and we suggested to the population through a participatory uh, forum and then we applied to a, to a local youth budget, uh, a local youth participatory budget. This means that we tried to gather good international experiences from this network, we tested and validated them in the local community and afterwards we defied the youth in our, in our uh, community to apply it to the local youth budget uh, in Marco, and it's, it was the winning proposal um, in last year, in 2021. A third example that I would like to mention is Copernico. Uh, Copernico is a, a Portuguese cooperative that is uh, one of the founding members, and it still is a member of Rescup, which is the, the confederation of uh, energy uh, cooperatives in Europe. Copernico is a non-profit, of course, uh, cooperative that's been very helpful, helpful, uh, helpful to us. Sorry, um, this participation in this in this um, cooperative also started from a need that we didn't identified in the community and in a specific target group in the community. It was NGOs. We have a, a very concentrated area of we can say like public services. We're talking about the municipality's headquarters, the kindergarten, the cemetery, the firefighters section, uh, the polysports pavilion, the cultural uh, center, and the social area of uh, uh, an NGO in our, in our village. This means that within the area of about an hectare, we serve uh, thousands of people every day in public interest services, related to social, to sports, to children, to education, to cemetery, what have you. And uh, one of the main concerns uh, of, the, of the NGOs that we're always uh, in contact um, through, the, through our mandates was the uh, energy costs and the context, the context costs. And for that, after some discussion and some um, networking experiences, we found that there was a very interesting solution yet to be built, but it was coming. That it was called a Renewable Energy Communities. Uh, we're talking about 2019. In 2019, the legislation was created in Portugal. Only in 2020 was kind of operated, not fully. Only in 2021, it was fully operational. And for that, uh, and for this project, um, the, Co the Copernico Cooperative was very helpful in creating the, the, the technical support for us to organize the, the process, uh, we got to the conclusion that we would need to create a, a cooperative to manage the interest of every single part. And we wanted to do this in a very impactful way uh, for a third reason. That would be, we want to have this project as an um, uh, exhibitionist exhibition project for the community to understand the impact, the gains, the savings from these kind of projects. I was trying to, to uh, incentivize the population at first to create their own energy communities in the, in the local buildings, in the, in, the, in the urban centers, but everyone was, all, uh, all the time they were asking about what was I talking about, what's the game, what's the, what's the purpose, what's the advantage. So we tried to take a different approach and go towards, uh, exempli uh, try to exemplify what we're doing and how the population can access the, its gains and how they can implement it afterwards. And in this sense, Copernico has been key, either in technical support, but as well, and that's the network for positive change effect again, and it's very concrete in our village. Um, they were very helpful in finding the uh, legal way and helping us structure uh, the process for us to be able to manage it. Because at the end, we can organize and create the renewable, uh, renewable energy community, but we need to be able to manage it and source the, uh, manage the source of energy and manage the income fairly and squarely between everyone. So 
uh, this is a great example how a network can bring uh, real value, savings and impact to local communities, especially in, um, in a rural area as well. And uh, last but not least, just organize like this for me to, to give the floor to Mathieu and Philippe that are here with us from Rouvener. Rouvener is uh, an energy transition um, uh, cooperative uh, NGO that uh, tries to uh, amplify, exemplify, promote, disseminate the, the advantages and the impacts of uh, uh, evolving as quickly as possible into sustainable energy communities. And I think they will give us and share uh, with us great examples of their impacts and their daily, to, daily activities. Mathieu? Yeah. Hi, thanks. Thanks again for the invitation. Um, first, I'm going to present a little bit about uh, Ruiner, what missions we put in place and what actions do we implement in order to tackle the emissions. And then Philippe will talk about the advantage of uh, being a member of European networks in general and with the example of Ruiner as uh, a member himself. Um, so first, Ruiner as you said, is a European network of rural communities that are committed to the energy transition. Um, our vision is to build a European Union self-conscious of the potentials of its territories, uh, and especially uh, its rural territories, to realize the uh, energy transition. Um, and by addressing the energy issues, we promote a transversal approach of rural de development. Uh, Ruiner is a space of dialogue between local actions and European policies, giving local actions a European dimension and fostering European policies with local insights. Uh, today, in our network, we have members representing uh, our, around 10 countries in, within the European Union. Uh, our missions, first, promote the sharing of good practices between rural territories in Europe and support the building of cooperation projects. And we are in the network, Runner is, has this expertise in the project building. We also develop tools and services to support rural territories to implement their energy strategy. So for instance, monitoring evaluation of impact, field study tours, or also territorial diagnosis. We raise awareness of energy challenges uh, opportunities, vulnerabilities, and potentials of these uh, challenges, uh, challenges in rural territories. And finally, we take local insights to the European level for an increased recognition of rural territories' role uh, in the energy transitions. And in order to tackle all of these missions, uh, we have several actions that are implemented. First, the little we think that it's really important, and so that's why we continuously build an animated community of, of interest of rural energy with the organization of European events to strengthen the network and collaboration also among the members. Um, the structuring of field study tours on rural energy and the identification of our members' needs for targeted networking. Uh, in order to uh, give an example, in uh, uh, one week, we will be find, uh, uh, close to you in Portugal. We will be in, uh, in Guimarães for uh, three days of an event where uh, the members of all of the network are invited with, in order to uh, build some uh, workshops and uh, to define what projects and what uh, vision we want to give to the network for uh, the year to come. Uh, we also put in place projects, of course, we build partnerships and we conduct projects with European national and regional fundings uh, and the partners from the network, but also with partners from, that are not part of the network. And um, usually when we start working with partners that are not in the network, they are coming to us after the end of the project in order to uh, to. Uh, to apply to the, to the network because of the interest they found it, they found it in it. Uh, we also can take, uh, the members can take advantage of our expertise on territorial dialogue related to energy projects. 
uh, we also support local authorities to monitor and evaluate the territorial impact of their energy strategy. And finally, we promote the achievement of our members and we share their experience. So there is a communication aspect too, through our, through our communication channels at the local, regional, national and European level. So basically, these were the emissions and the actions that were taken by a runner. And uh, now Philippe will be able to, uh, to explain us uh, why uh, it's interesting to join uh, such a, Euro a European network. Thank you, Mathieu, for this uh, very good presentation. Uh, so um, on my side, um, so actually, I am both uh, a member, uh, so, uh, an administrator of Runner and um, I'm also an elected people uh, in uh, Vexin Francais, that is a, a rural area uh, in the Ile-de-France uh, region. Uh, so, of course, uh, this is why I will say that uh, Rurner is an amazing network because uh, I know uh, the, the system and, uh, and the uh, organization uh, so both on the side of the internal view and uh, on the external view. Uh, I also have to admit that uh, for the moment, this uh, uh, national, so this regional park, uh, Vexin Francais, is not part uh, of Runner yet, but uh, I am working hard uh, to uh, make it become a member because mainly of two reasons, uh, and two reasons that was... Um, um, uh, indicated by Mathieu. The first one is that uh, this network uh, enables to share experiences. And this is very interesting uh, to see that in Europe you have uh, a lot of territories that are very similar. Uh, and especially in France, uh, on which we have a very uh, high diversity of territories. Uh, despite this diversity, it is very uh, easy to find in Europe uh, territory that looks like your territory. And uh, it's a very uh, important uh, opportunity to share experiences and maybe also to uh, have an analysis or a diagnostic of uh, what could be interesting to put in place in terms of um, energy strategy or energy mix. So this is the first point. The, the second point, uh, so as maybe as a, a citizen, uh, what makes sense for me uh, is that uh, it shows how concrete European uh, strategy or European Union uh, can be when we implement some programs or some projects at the local level. And I think it's very important that uh, such an organization as Rurner, that are actually small organization at the end, but uh, we uh, really have to uh, um, give consideration on the fact that uh, so those uh, small projects makes it because of Europe. And you know that in Europe, a lot of citizens uh, don't really know what uh, uh, Europe can bring to them. And by the way, when I see uh, the collector project, the internet reg project, on which um, uh, Rue can take the lead, and uh, as a project leader, can make some very uh, concrete uh, project. Uh, I think uh, it's really important to highlight that point. Last point, uh, I, I would like to also highlight one point that uh, Mathieu mentioned. Uh, this is actually the dialogue, and especially the dialogue with uh, between uh, elected people uh, between citizens and also uh, project uh, energy project holders, because you know, um, so the most um, the uh, uh, rural energy project get bigger, the, mon the most you have this phenomenon 
of people that say, okay, I agree with uh, the energy and the renewable energy on the overall, but not in my backyard. This is more and more often, and I think it's uh, simply the consequence that we have more and more concrete projects that are put in place. But we need to um, have a dialogue that most of the time is not enough. And this leads to a lot of uh, fears, a lot of rejection. And there is something Ruroner is very good at. This is coming into a territory, listening people, and um, putting a, a view of what is the status, what can be the strategy, and how people can solve some solution, uh, some issues together. So this is the point I would like to, uh, to finish with, because uh, this is something we had some very concrete experience last uh, week uh, in uh, uh, PNR Milvache in Limousin, center of France, and uh, uh, Mathieu and Céline did a very good job uh, in uh, this uh, uh, territory analysis uh, in order to uh, find some solution and to make people discuss around those projects. Thank you. Exactly. This uh, this pro this project we are uh, Philip was talking about. Yeah. Uh, in this project, my colleague and I we went on this territory as a neutral actor. Mm -hmm. uh, in order to make some interviews with several actors of the territory, so uh, actors, private actors, uh, elected elected person, a representative of the states there, and also f uh, actors from society, uh, from the society, uh, in order for us to uh, be able to know what was their vision of their territory, the stakes that were important in the territory, and then with all of the information we gathered, we went back there in front of these people with the documents that we had prepared between all of the uh, exchanges in order to say, okay, so uh, we, do, we won't name and say this person said this and this person said, said that, but we, we said, uh, we explained what we heard, what for us was good things, the, the good things that were already working on the territory, what could be uh, adapted to the situation. And um, then the actors of the territory discuss together with us as uh, monitoring and uh, try to focus on what kind of project can could be built. And this is what Philippe uh, tackled when he said that about the dialogue for us in order for the project to be, uh, to be conducted in the best way from the beginning to the end. We need to have at the beginning this dialogue, uh, including all of the people that could be uh, included in it. Mm -hmm. And... Um this, I think, this this process in terms of uh, what people um, thought and the, their contributions to the discussion on their views and their opinions about the qualities and the, the problems of the of the of the community. Did you find that they were um, at least somewhat different than the, the the idea that you expected to find where before you you went for the inter, the, the interviews, or was it? Uh, coherent or were they more positively uh, they have uh, had a more positive idea of the whole community as a concept uh, as a whole or or, uh, or worse uh, idea of, of the community I don't know if it was the case there was a yeah, difference yeah. Uh, we are always surprised when we go on territories to conduct these exchanges because before going there we obviously we have kind of uh, ideas about what we will find or what we won't find. Uh, however, at the end of all of these exchanges, you obviously have some points that you didn't never, you even didn't uh, never Consider. thought about um, because they know their territory more than us. Um, but something that is quite interesting is that we conducted these uh, exchanges and this experience on several uh, French, uh, French territories, mm -hmm. quite far from each other. Um, and you find similarities between these territories. You find the will to tackle this energy issue uh, at, the, at, at the roots. Uh, you, you find the will of the population to be included 
in, within the projects because they want to be part of this. Uh, and you also find the, some difficulties on the territories sometimes to be heard at the, at the higher level. So this is, what, this is why joining a network is interesting. Yeah. You also find difficulties to, uh, to put concrete actions after all of the wheels and the, mm -hmm. the says. When time comes to uh, concrete actions, sometimes it comp it's uh, complicated to find a leader or to find someone to listen to. So we have some surprises. We also know that things are going to happen on a, on a certain way. Um, but as people are included within the beginning in the discussions, usually when the problems are, are tackled, this, it's easier. It's not every time... Uh, super easy, but it's easier to uh, discuss and to try to find a solution. I don't say that we find a solution directly there. After, there is mm -hmm. a time where the actors of the territories need to discuss bet between each other. We, us, we are just here to uh, follow the continuity of the actions yeah. and to make sure that the mm -hmm. process is still uh, going on the same way as we implemented it, but we still, uh, it's, it's not we, they don't find a solution directly. It's still a, it's a long t long term work. Yeah, um, uh, Philippe, I, I saw you. I add, can, can I just interrupt uh, you for a quick second, just yes, to organize the time? We're we're at time, so I'm asking for this extra minute for us to share 20 seconds each or 30 seconds each, and I'll just say bye bye. Uh, we're slaves of time. I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. It's okay. okay. And uh, so very quickly, and in 20 seconds, what I would like to um, uh, to say is that. I always amazed uh, when I notice that when we discover a new territory, um, we um, um, are able to make this ter territory proud of what they do in terms of energy. And this mm -hmm. is a very good reason to become a Ruroner member, because uh, most of the time, uh, territory do a lot in terms of energy, in terms of transition, but they uh, don't know how much they do. Yeah. And uh, it's always time uh, to get more proud and to know better what uh, is interesting in their territory. That is a great note to, to finish on. I don't know if you want to add anything, just quickly, Matthew. Oh, yeah, I think it's a perfect way to conclude this, uh, this presentation. Guys, thank you so much for your time. Thank you for uh, saving Thanks a bit of you. your afternoon. Thank you for the invitation. And, yeah, thank you. Bonsoir from, and see you in a uh, couple of days time. Thank you. Yeah. Bye. Thank you. Bye-bye. You. Creio que temos aqui a sessão concluída. Eu pedia só uma vez mais desculpa por ter sido em inglês, mas é assim que a gente também traz parceiros e gente nova para a nossa casa. Obrigado. Obrigada. Obrigada, Miguel, e obrigada aos nossos uh, oradores, uh, Matia e Filipe. Uh, e uh, passamos então agora para a última sessão uh, do dia 1 um, uh, do Green Fest. Uh, e voltamos a ter uh, a engenheira Paula Teles conosco uh, para nos apresentar a Carta das Patologias e Mazelas Urbanas. Uh, portanto, uh, dentro de breves momentos iniciaremos com este novo conteúdo. Fiquem por aí e até já.